Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Alrighty, hello everybody and good afternoon or good morning depending on where you're calling in from. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our 2018 Exit Planning Summit uh, Insight webinar. Uh, my name is Drew English. I'm the program coordinator here at the Exit Planning Institute and I am uh, with our speaker today, Jerry Woods, uh, who is the Vice President of Commercial Lending with Byline Bank. Uh, before I turn it over to Jerry today, uh, a few housekeeping notes from me. Uh, first off, the webinar is being recorded and the recording will be sent out to you later today. Uh, so just look for an email from me uh, with that attachment and make sure to download the, uh, the recording. Uh, two, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that during the presentation, uh, on your drop-down menu of GoToWebinar, uh, there's a questions box. Uh, go ahead and type your question in there, and then I'll be more than happy to facilitate those over to Jerry um, at the end of the uh, end of the call today. Uh, so before I turn it over to, to Jerry, uh, one, I wanted to, to speak on kind of why he's here. Um, so in September, at the end of September, the 24th and 25th, uh, we're holding our uh, summit down in Nashville, Tennessee, and Jerry is one of our uh, one of our sponsors, one of our exhibitors that we're going to have there. And so we do these webinars so that people could come on and kind of get their toes wet and 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 see who's going to be um, all there and in person at the at the summit. So um, if you are not signed up for the summit and want to get some more interest on it, please go to www.exitplanningconference.com, and all the information will be on there for. Uh, for the summit, or if you have, or if you just want to give me a call as well, I'll be more than happy to uh, to direct you in the right right position. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jerry. Uh, he'll give a little bit of background on himself, and and we'll go into the into the call today. Uh, so Jerry, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Drew, and thanks everyone for joining us here today. Let me just give you a little bit of background on Byline Bank. I don't have a, a slide on this, but I'll just tell you we're a 4.8 billion dollar bank headquartered in Chicago. And I'm coming to you today from uh, Franklin, Tennessee, which is right outside of Nashville. So I'm looking forward to welcoming, welcoming everyone uh, to my adopted home here down in the Green Hills of Tennessee uh, next month at the summit. Uh, Byline Bank is a, a national preferred lender for SBA. We have 28 individuals like myself scattered throughout 10 cities around the country. All of us travel all over the country doing uh, uh, work for transition planning and transition lending, fun funding of SBA loans throughout the country. We, uh, we, we we're, uh, list ourselves here as a top 10 SBA lender in the country. Truth be known, we're probably in the number five, number six slot. That changes all the time. We do about a half a billion dollars of SBA approvals each year. So, uh, and a significant portion of those are transition type of financing deals. So we, uh, we, we are very, very involved in this. We, uh, we do partner buyouts, family transitions, and arm's length type of transaction, third-party transactions. Um, you know, we, uh, a little bit of background, I guess, uh, all SBA lenders operate under the same procedures, the standard operating procedures or the SOP, as you will hear. And those are rules that we all follow. And, and the rules are very, very important, and we adhere to them to very well. Now, that is the box that we operate in. Every bank is a little bit different in how they will how far they will go how conserve they they can be more conservative than the sop you cannot be more liberal than the sop so some banks will choose different uh, their own credit policies outside of the uh, the sop the sop is like i say is the uh, the foundation of their their lending uh, policy and two such areas is collateral so some will do more unsecured portions uh, we are one of those that will do more unsecured portions. We're a cash flow lender and not a collateral lender. Uh, that's what the SBA is for. And uh, in, in transition financing, change of ownership financing, that's extremely important because as you, uh, you all know that uh, you know, so much of what we are financing is goodwill and much of that is, is not uh, uh, you know, uh, have a collateral behind it at all. The other is the range of SBA products that are offered. We do make use of 
most every one of the SBA loans, including lines of credit, which I'll get into later in the presentation. So let me move ahead here. If I can. There we go. Um, and this is a portion, uh, a small portion of a larger workshop that I do around the country for exit planners. We work with exit planners a great deal. It's probably 90% plus of my practice in banking. And, you know, I've been doing this for many, many years. Uh, but, you know, exit planning has become an extremely important part. So we work with exit planners all over and we tend to get involved very early because the the actual transition of the uh, of the business that's at the very end of it but we get involved very early with the creation and maximization of the enterprise value so as i tell exit planners all over the country you know the sooner we can get involved in a, in an opportunity in a client we can start steering those type of exit plans for the ultimate financing objective at the end so that's that's very important for us. So we have both the creation and then ultimately, yes, the conversion of that enterprise value upon the consummation of the sale uh, of, of the enterprise. A little bit about benefits uh, of SBA financing, utilizing that for, uh, for the creation and, and conversion. Uh, the ways of the SBA financing to, is to maximize organic sales growth potential and, and cash flow. So on the front end of creating uh, ex uh, enterprise value for the company, we're providing long-term and short-term, both temporary and permanent working capital to the enterprise so that they can grow sales, move into new geographical areas, that type of thing. Um, we, another important piece of it is the minimization of debt service demands on the, on, on the company as, as well. So, because if, if you finance this working capital, but do it, do it over a one or three year period, it's not gonna help the company grow quite as well because you're going to be paying back more of the loan you know, on a faster basis. So we like to preserve that working capital so, so that the, the company can continue to grow, hire more people, build inventory, build uh, accounts receivable, all of those things. And then lastly here is financing roll-up opportunities, and we do a great deal of that as well. We may be working with your client who ultimately wants to sell his business some five or 10 years from now, but in the interim, we'll be financing these roll-up opportunities so that the exit plan can be uh, uh, done in such a way and that they can uh, hit their objectives uh, that they're setting out in the plan. Uh, other uh, conversion of enterprise value is beneficial loan structuring for ex uh, the execution of the exit plan. And we'll talk a little bit more about that briefly. Minimize equi equity injection, maximize uh, the cash to the seller at closing. That's always important, you know, especially for your clients. They do not, they don't want to be a banker. You know, they want to ob obtain you know, the vast majority, if not all of their sale on the day of conversion. And that's very helpful for them too. Uh, we, we, like we said before, we want to minimize the debt service and maximize by maximizing the loan term. And most importantly for uh, the change of ownership is finance intangible unsecured assets by utilizing the guarantee of SBA and I might say USDA. We also are very active and, and key in that product as well. Um, Create additional value for the, uh, the enterprise. We provide working capital. There is both long-term, like I said, and short-term. We provide lines of credit that are 10 years in duration or temporary. Some are asset-based. Some are not asset-based and are, are, are not secured. And they can be utilized over that 10-year term, which is very important, again, to growing that business. Uh, additional is improve the business efficiency through financing pr increased production needs, financing equipment, financing real estate. All of that is done very, very well through this program in, either, you know, in creating value of this company, increasing that capacity 
getting to that magic number and that magic date that is in your exit plan for your clients. Very, very important that we uh, take a look at all of those things. I'm sorry I'm moving pretty fast here because I know our time is very limited. Uh, as far as financing roll-up opportunities for your clients, uh, we do partner buyouts to acquire 100 percent of uh, uh, existing enterprises. We do competitor ac acquisitions, you know, in these roll-ups to add sales and cash flow while enhancing the market share or buying talent along with market share. Uh, we use SBA to leverage uh, uh, the leverage of SBA to acquire additional sales and cash flow with minimal equity injection. We'll talk more about that and acquiring companies with superior competencies, so like I was saying before, market segments, assets, geographical diversification, all very, very important in adding value, enterprise value to your client's uh, company, getting it ready for that ultimate sale. You know, converting the, uh, the enterprise at, uh, at the end of the exit plan is uh, minimizing that equity uh, contribution. That is typically 10% of, of the purchasers of the purchase price that is donated, or I should say contributed to, uh, um, you know, into the deal, 10% of the acquisition, including costs and, and such. It can be done with as little as 5%. We like to see 10, but uh, it can be done with a, as little as five if the seller is willing to take a note back for uh, the other 5%. But I find that most sellers do not want to wait 10 to 25 years to get the, the, the difference. And if there's a way of obtaining that, we, uh, we're very creative in getting that structure. Seller notes uh, to be subordinated to the bank and the SBA for the life of the loan, as I said, may have, uh, you may have more than one seller note, and that gets very creative. You may have that 5% note that is on subordination and standby for the life of the loan, but the other note B that is starts to amortize on the second month. It depends on the strength of the, of the company. And then also retention of working capital assets, because in most asset sales, as you know, most of that working capital leaves with the sale of the business. And so we do need to replace that upon the transition. As far as the terms go, 25 years for real estate, 10% for equipment and working capital. Where we get creative is when there is all types of different uses inside of that acquisition for both working capital, equipment, and real estate. We'll either do a weighted average calculation or if the real estate portion is 51% or greater than the overall loan amount, if that purpose is real estate is 51%, we do the entire amount over 25 years, which is tremendous for cash flow uh, during that transition period. And uh, love to, to share more uh, with that about you at the, uh, at the conference when I see you. As far as replacing working capital, I'll just breeze through this because we talked about it before. We offer both asset-based and non-asset-based permanent and temporary working capital. We have both products that we will utilize and plug in for your clients. And uh, you can spend quite a bit of time just on that one there. So wanted to run through and, and uh, being cognizant of our time here, some examples very quickly uh, as far as, uh, the, and these are live deals that, uh, that I have closed in the last, oh, 12 to 16 months, say. And we'll just walk through these as example. And, and I tried to pull out three of them that kind of encompassed everything else that I talked about here in the previous, previous moments together. First one was uh, financing a partner buyout. So we had partner one uh, with 36% uh, interest in the business, buying out the majority owner of, of 63%. The value of the enterprise pre-buyout, and this was a smaller deal, was uh, uh, was seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars, but as you know, there's always a minority discount. So post acquisition, immediately that minority interest discount is eliminated, and we go up to nine hundred fifteen thousand dollars. The selling partner put in two different notes: one that was uh, uh, payable over ten years, as you see there, and one that was payable over two years. So we 
used a split seller note so we could uh, work on that. Equity contribution of the buying partner was zero in this example. And then we also added to the working capital to grow this uh, company further. We added another $100,000 of working capital so the, the buying partner could uh, really take this to where he wanted to, uh, to go with it. A uh, little bit more about this one. It, uh, it was uh, an SBA loan that was done over a 10-year basis. Short-term seller notes paid out over two and 10 year 10 years. Total discounted collateral for this was $88,000, with the unsecured portion being $826,000. So we were only on a discounted basis. We only had 10% collateral, so we were 90% unsecured on this deal. Debt service was very, very good, as you can see. They covered that historically at 1.86 uh, with the uh, with the seller note. And I just put this in here today because we've done a subsequent valuation on this company post uh, close. And now that company is worth two and a half million dollars. So going flipping back here, you can see that uh, uh, we started with seven hundred eighty thousand dollars and now we are at two point five million dollars value. Pretty good example there. Uh, secondly, the second example here was a third party arm's length deal where the value of the 100% interest was 2.782. Uh, negotiated price was 2.6, so the buyer was picking up some value right out of the box. And, uh, and then uh, SBA loan for the acquisition interest, our loan was $2.3 million. Seller took a, a note payable over 10 years for, uh, uh, one, uh, for 130. Buyer put in 10% of both the acquisition of the purchase price and the working capital that we put in for $269,000. Postscript, after the acquisition, the SBA loan was made over the 10 year basis again. Seller's note was paid out over 10 years with payments on standby for the first two years. Discounted collateral on this, this deal was uh, roughly $520,000 with the unsecured portion of the loan being almost $1.8 million unsecured. So our discounted collateral coverage was 30%. We were 70% unsecured on this. So uh, again, a historical debt service was very good at over two times. So that uh, was excellent. And the last example, and I'm, I'm again, I'm sorry, I'm going through these so quickly. And I'd love to just uh, have uh, time with you uh, when you're here in Nashville to walk through these more in detail or, or talk about your examples uh, that you have. So number three here is with real estate. And this was a little more complex because uh, the business was actually acquired with a 504 loan by another bank. And they, the company was purchased for the price of the equipment. Was, uh, the company was in fairly bad shape and it was relocated from the East Coast to the Green Hills of Tennessee. And uh, so uh, then the, uh, uh, the buyer's equity injection for that was 10%, or they put $100,000 in to acquire the, comp uh, the company through that 504 loan. We came along subsequent to that and uh, purchased the building, purchased more equipment, uh, provided a bunch of working capital to grow this company. And uh, so we, we did all that for 1.65. Purchase price of the building was $906,000. Buyer's equity injection was $82,000 into it. Additional working capital that we added to it was $200,000. So they really could grow this. So uh, the uh, um, you know a, as you can see, the loan was uh, 1.65. The purchase price of the building improvements was 906, and uh, working capital was was 200 there plus some equipment. Postscript acquisition, like I said, was done through a 504 loan. Uh, but what we did, since the majority of the loan, $906,000 of it out of 1.65, the majority of the loan was for the real estate purpose. We did the entire loan over 25 years, including for the equipment and for the working capital, which really drove down that perch, down that those monthly payments a great deal, allowing that company to, to really go national in their marketing efforts and, and hire more people 
and just extend their, their reach much further because they're, they're, they weren't paying the loan down quite as fast. So that's what uh, really helped them a great deal. Total discounted collateral for the loan was a uh, little over a million dollars. Uh, with the unsecured portion being roughly $600,000. Again, we had very strong uh, debt service. Before, uh, before we did uh, um, the purchase of the business, it was one point, or right at the purchase of the business, it was 1.38. And after the acquisition and relocation, that went up to 2.62. Uh, it, the cost of living in uh, the Green Hills of Tennessee is a lot lower than on the East Coast. And so there's some real benefits. Sorry for anyone that's on the East Coast here today. Uh, in summation, uh, again, SBA loans can be used to create and convert enterprise value. And we are very involved with both sides of that coin. We want to create a, a company for your client through the use of good financing to grow these companies smartly. And, and, and in a very disciplined way to, so that they can achieve their values that they're, they're looking for and that you are looking for uh, so they can exit that business in, in the, the, the manner that they had always dreamed of. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, SBA use, loans are used for the replacement or addition of permanent working capital. That is critical because you can, you know, if we can finance the acquisition of a business, but if we strip out the working capital at the time of closing and we don't replace that or augment that, then either the company will fail, it will run out of gas when, the, when they run out of working capital, or they won't be able to achieve the objectives. And if there's a seller note involved, involved in the situation, that's bad news for everyone. Uh, thirdly, the SBA loans are used to minimize equity injection, maximize seller payouts. SBA loans are uh, used to provide long-term financing 10 to 25 years. And lastly, SBA loans are used to minimize debt service to allow the business to grow more rapidly and organically post the acquisition. So th that's the, uh, the end of my time. I wanted to get through this as quickly. I'm sorry for rushing. I wanted to leave some time for questions and answers. Like I uh, said, I will be, uh, I'm sorry for the picture there, everyone. I know it's lunch in some places, but uh, I wanted to provide everyone with my contact information and I will be there uh, here in, uh, in Nashville when y'all are, are here and uh, love to introduce myself personally. My contact information is, is there. And at this time, I will turn it back to Drew and uh, let's uh, see if there are any questions and uh, that we can answer in the remaining moments of our half hour. Perfect, thanks, Jerry. I appreciate you going through that and, and hopefully getting some uh, toes wet in the water there a little bit. So uh, there were a, a question that came through. So if there's any additional questions, please go ahead and, and type those in the question box, uh, box at this time. Uh, but Jerry, what's the um, one question is, what's the size range that you work with and what's the time frame that you deal with that you normally see for the closing? Sure. Well, and, and that that varies. SBA as a, as a product, we top out on, on, on a 7A loan of and I'll start throwing some of these acronyms out here. Seven A loans are the ones that are used to do most acquisitions because we're talking about uh, non-durable equipment, sometimes working capital, and most importantly, all those intangibles. That will top out at $5 million. That's on the our side of it. Now to that, you have whatever equity injection by the buyer is available to be injected and any type of seller note that is negotiated over and above that. So you can have a much larger deal than $5 million. That's the, the area that we work in most and, and the vast majority of the time that is adequate uh, to handle things. Now, if, you, if there's real estate involved or we use USDA, we can take that up to $20 million. Uh, you know, if, if, if certain things uh, apply. So there's no real set answer for that, but by and large, $5 million is, is the neighborhood that we work in most of the time. Do go higher. As far as time frame goes, like I said, on the top, we, we get very, very involved with, uh, we have a relationship with exit planners all over the country. 
Uh, a number of our, our uh, lenders around the country are involved uh, as well with uh, the exit planners. And uh, we like to get involved. And depending on when we get involved, we could be involved for three to five years in building that company up. On the back side, as far as the time frame for the exit, uh, you know, that typically is around 90 days. And I think that's generous. It, it, it can be you know, 60 to 90 days on the, on the outside. It really depends on how organized the, the seller is and with good exit planning. The, I know exit planners I work with, they are extremely well organized and ready for this. And uh, that helps things to speed things up a great deal. Uh, on the closing side, you know, you always know, but you know, it, it's typically we have an answer with, uh, we, we do LOIs inside of a few days, uh, commitments within a, a few weeks, and then uh, we're typically closed up in, in two to two to three months, uh, like say 60 to 75 days is generally the answer there, Drew. Perfect. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that. Um, and if there's any additional questions, um, obviously you see Jerry's uh, you know, office number and, and uh, email address, but you're more than welcome to send any questions uh, additionally to me offline. I'd be more than happy to, to send that over and, and get those answered for you. But uh, with that, we can go ahead and, and conclude today's webinar. But before I let everyone go again, um, if you are not signed up for this uh, exit planning summit and you are interested or want further information, please visit uh, www.exitplanningconference.com or go ahead and call our EPI global office and, uh, and I'll be more than happy to share information for you and, and kind of let you know when uh, Jerry might be around and, and when our times are for the exhibit halls to be open. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude. Uh, Jerry, thank you very, very much for spending some time with us and quickly going through stuff. Um, if there's any additional questions, please go ahead and send those to Jerry and we'll, uh, we'll get those answered for you. But with that, we'll get everyone back into their busy, busy day today and busy week. Jerry, appreciate you spending some time with us, and we'll talk soon. Our pleasure.